Hi everybody, thanks for being with me. We're going to talk about functional groups or organic molecules. First, a functional group contains an atom or group of atoms with characteristic chemical and physical properties. So when you have one functional group and you know that it's chemical and physical properties, you can predict the chemical and physical properties of other compounds that contain that same functional group. Next, they can contain a heteroatom, a multiple bond, or both a multiple bond and a heteroatom. Now I'm going to show you two different tables from my textbook. This first one, I like how it's broken apart. Uh, this first one contains single bond, single bond heteroatoms. So let's look at this list. First, we have alkyl halides. This simply means that you have a halogen attached to your organic molecule. Uh, Remember our halogens, those are going to be group 17. You've got our fluorine, brom fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. For naming this, you just add the word ending in chloro, or excuse me, O. So for example, it would be fluoro, chloro, bromo, iodo. <laughs> uh, alcohols. Alcohols have an OH at the very end, the very end of the molecule. I need to interject right here as well. R. You can Google all kinds of beautiful tables of functional groups. Print it out, tape it in your, your notebook, or you can write these, you can write these. Uh, the R simply means any chain of carbons. It, it can be cyclical, aromatic, or it could be a straight chain, doesn't matter. It's just a group of carbons. And the alcohol's always at the end. So for example, let me write this one out. We're going to have a methanol. You've got one carbon. There's its three hydrogens and then an OH attached to it. That's an alcohol functional group. We will, in our IUPAC naming, have the ending, the suffix for this particular molecule end in OL, OL. So this will be OL for the suffix. Methanol, that OL, that tells you, oh, it has an alcohol group. Propanol, that has an alcohol group in it, nice. Now ethers, Ether, ethers will be an oxygen somewhere in the middle of an organic chain. So it's going to be flanked by carbons, single bonded, a carbon on each side of that oxygen. The ending on these are oxy, O-X-Y. Uh, in older naming before our IUPAC, we would just add the name ether, like ethyl ether. Um, but in our IUPAC naming, oxy is the ending that we use for ethers. Amine. Now, an amine is a single bond to a nitrogen. Single bond to a nitrogen. Uh, the nitrogen can contain two hydrogens, which means it's at the end of the molecule, or it could have one hydrogen or no hydrogens. So it's in the middle of the molecule. Does not matter. Does not matter. As long as you have a nitrogen somewhere in that organic molecule, I'll plant the seed now, no oxygens, no double bonded oxygens next to it is called an amine. And the ending for this is actually just amine. We add the ending, the suffix amine. Lastly, for our single bonded, we've got thiols. Thiol is when you have a sulfur somewhere in that molecule. It's going to be called uh, a thiol. And the ending, the suffix, is going to be thiol. Nice. So let's do just a little bit of practice. I'm going to scroll and we'll look at some molecules together. So we want to ide identify the functional groups. Just so you know, you can have multiple functional groups in the same molecule. They could be the same functional groups or they could be different functional groups. And you want to identify every functional group. Looking at this, ooh, I see that OH. OH at the very end, remember, is an alcohol. Alcohol. And you can see in our skeletal structure how we write that. It's going to be the OH. If I were to write the complete just for this last, You'd have the carbon and then a single bond to the oxygen, single bond to the hydrogen. There's your alcohol. Here I have two. I have two different types of functional groups. The first one that jumps out is we have all of these fluorines. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Those are alkyl halides. And we've got seven of them, seven alkyl halides. I also notice an oxygen bonded to two carbons, single bonded, one carbon here, one carbon here, that is an ether. So this has both the alkyl halide, and I'll make a little note, there's seven of those, and it has an ether. And again, that ether is right there, nice. 
Lastly, nitrogen, and it's in the middle of the organic molecule. It could also be at the end, doesn't matter. The fact is I see a nitrogen. That is going to be an amine, A-M-I-N-E. All right, very good. Now let's look at functional groups that contain some sort of double bond in it. Okay, so here we have a, an aldehyde. An aldehyde is uh, specifically at the end. It's always going to be at the end of the organic molecule. It's the last carbon contains a double bonded oxygen and a hydrogen. That's your aldehyde. Uh, like this example, so you've got your CH3 with the carbon double bonded oxygen and that hydrogen. Notice how it's written, CHO. That's going to be your condensed form. That's also what you're going to see in skeletal uh, structures, is that CHO tells you, all right, that last carbon has a double bonded oxygen and the hydrogen. Uh, the ending on this, I've got to remember, the ending is AL. AL is the ending for aldehydes. That's going to be the suffix. Ketones. Ketones are somewhere in the middle somewhere in the middle of the carbon chain, you've got a double bonded oxygen. The key on this is the double bonded oxygen cannot be at the end. If it's at the end, that's an aldehyde. If the double bonded oxygen somewhere in the middle of that uh, carbon chain, it can even be second to the last carbon, uh, that is called your ketone. And the suffix on that is O-N-E, O-N-E. So notice this has two R's. Sometimes you'll see R or R prime or R double prime. You can have any number of carbons on the opposite side of the carbon that contains the double bond, double bonded oxygen. It doesn't matter how many carbons there are. Nice, carboxylic acids. Carboxylic acids, again, significant. It's the last carbon. It's always that last carbon. So you have a carbon with a double bonded oxygen and and OH. So it looks like kind of the marriage between the aldehyde, there's your double bonded oxygen on the last carbon, and an alcohol, the OH. That together is a carboxylic acid. And look how this is written. You'll have CO2H. CO2H, that indicates your double bonded oxygen and then a single bonded oxygen that's your carboxylic acid. The ending on this is oic acid, O-I-C acid, oic acid. Next, we have esters. An ester is going to happen somewhere in the middle. It will never be at the end. It'll never be the last carbon in your carbon chain. So here we have a double bonded oxygen and then a single bonded oxygen somewhere in the middle of that chain. So what this looks like, it looks like the marriage between a ketone if I were to take out that oxygen, it would be a ketone. Or if I were to take out that double bonded oxygen and just have a single bond, an ether. So this is the, it looks like the combination of a ketone and an ether. And we call this an ester. The suffix on this is O8, O8, uh, like methano8. Uh, how we write this is C with an O2. So in your condensed, your skeletal structures, when that you see that C with the O2, you'll remember, oh, it's a double bonded oxygen and then a single bonded oxygen. It'll be somewhere in the middle of the molecule. The last one that you need to know is an amide, A-M-I-D-E. So we change one little letter from an amine, the N, to an amide, a D. Here's the difference. You still have a nitrogen anywhere in the middle of the molecule. It could be at the end or in the middle. But right next to it, so the adjacent carbon next to the nitrogen contains a double bonded oxygen. So this looks like the marriage between a ketone and an am amine. Bring that together, we have an amide, an amide. <laughs> uh, the nitrogen, again, it could have two hydrogens, one hydrogen, no hydrogens. You could have, here it says hydrogen or an R group, either one, totally fine, nice. Let's do some practice with this one as well. There are two, two different groups of practice. This first one I like because it's so visual. So let's look at this benzaldehyde. Notice that CHO, that CHO indicates to you and I, last carbon, 
that there's a double bonded oxygen with a hydrogen. It's an aldehyde, an aldehyde. Let me write that down. That's an aldehyde. Let's look at this molecule. It has, I can see four functional groups. Here's our first one. That is an alcohol. So again, that would just be the carbon with the oxygen and the hydrogen. And then notice these three right there. One, two, three. Those are all identical endings. It's the last carbon, two oxygens and a hydrogen. Those are carboxylic acids. Acids, and we've got three of them. Remember, that indicates, let me draw this. You've got your carbon. There's going to be another carbon with a double bonded oxygen and then that OH on it. It's this part right here that's your carboxylic acid. Nice. Let's come over here. I see a CO2, and it's in the middle of this chain. It's not at the end. Middle of the chain. That is going to be an ester. An ester. Esters are very fragrant. They usually have really strong smells. So this, I have my end carbon. Here's this second carbon with a double bonded oxygen, single bonded oxygen, and then there is your next, I'm just stopping right there, there's your next carbon. So there's the ester, the ester, nice. You have another one right here. This is also going to be an ester. And notice the ending on this is the O8, ethyl butanoate. Nice. Let's do one more practice. Let me show you right down here. Okay, let's identify the functional groups on these. This first one, I see the CHO is the last carbon. That's an aldehyde. Remember, it would be written in our complete as a carbon double bonded to oxygen with the hydrogen. That's your aldehyde. Nice. And then here at the very end, I see the CO2H. That's a carboxylic acid. That would be the carbon double bonded oxygen with the oxygen and the hydrogen. So let's write that out. There's your carboxylic acid. Nice. Here, double bonded oxygen in the middle of this cyclical ring. One double bonded oxygen is going to be a ketone. That's our ketone right there. Now I see the CO2 in the middle of our compound. That's the same thing as a carbon double bonded to oxygen with a single bonded oxygen and the next carbon. That is our ester. That's our ester. Nice. This one is the combination of that double bonded oxygen to the carbon with the nitrogen. Do you remember what this is? Amide. That's an amide. Oh, and I don't think I told you the suffix. We just put the word amide uh, as the suffix when we have that double bonded oxygen and the nitrogen. Okay, well done. I strongly recommend memorize these. Have those down cold and you'll be great. Have a good day. So proud of you. Bye.